Starting at verse 13 here, it says, Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, It should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. For 40 days and 40 nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus told him, No. The scriptures say people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him away to the holy city, Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple and said, If you are the Son of God, jump off. For the scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you. And they will hold you up with their hands so that you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, the scriptures also say you must not test the Lord your God. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of the world and all their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you kneel, if you will kneel down and worship me. Get out of here, Satan, Jesus told him. For the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, for what you're going to Lord, that your word is here to breathe life into us, Lord, to, to show us uh, just the example that you have set before us, God. We want to be like you. It's not just a slogan of what would Jesus do. Um, Lord, we want to live that out every day. And Lord, we need your wisdom to do that. So help us today. Help us to recognize uh, some signs that we're on the right path today. And we'll give you praise for that and what you do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So some signs that we're on the right path uh, this morning. Some things we're going to look out here. Uh, today is the first one is this, people don't always agree with your decisions. They don't always agree with your decisions uh, when you're following the Lord. So, to some people, you look whacked, okay? Some people, you know, they're, they're not going to understand. Some of you, you know this, just by coming to church today, <laughs> you're like, it was raining this morning. <laughs> you left your house. I mean, it, it's crazy that you would believe so much or, or you know, in, in, in God, that you would come and spend time with other believers and, and spend time together. They don't, they don't understand it. They don't understand your decisions that you, that you make. And we see a little glimpse of this here, even with um, the church, which is interesting, right? Because there's sometimes when, when the Lord even speaks to you, okay, and kind of leads you in a certain way, sometimes people around you uh, that love and care about you will not fully understand, okay, uh, what you're doing or the decision that you feel like you have to make. And so we look at this with John the Baptist, uh, with Jesus, in those first few verses, it says, then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, but John tried to talk him out of it, and because it didn't make any sense, and you can understand why. I mean, this is Jesus, you know, who am I, who are we, right, or uh, that we should baptize you. I mean, this is why we're baptizing is because you, you're the, you're the son of God uh, here. And so, but John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. We must carry out all that God requires. And sometimes the Lord is going to speak something to you, and, and the initial thought is going to be like, that is crazy. You know, I think about that with Timothy, and I think uh, when we met Timothy when he was three years old, okay, my brother had brought him to a uh, kind of a family ocean trip, and uh, his parents had lost parental rights at that point, and so Cindy and I are there at this ocean trip. We don't have any kids, 
And we just had a piece, Cindy and I connected about that. We had a piece about adopting Timothy when he was three years old. And we had that conversation, and we were just like, oh, you know, he'll always know he was first, you know. <laughs> All these things that, you know, in our mind at that time that we thought um, were, uh, you know, pertinent because we didn't have any kids at that, at that moment. And so here it was seven years later, okay, seven years later, we're going out. Uh, for a graduation out in Washington State, and um, Cindy has this dream that we're bringing Timothy home. So she says she told me about it. <clears throat> I didn't really remember that, that she told me, but uh, she has this dream. And so we get out to Washington State, we're out there a couple days, and we're getting ready to go up with some family to Mount St. Helens, and my mom calls me, who lives in, in Renton, just a suburb of Seattle, and she says, you're not going to believe this, but I just got off the phone with Timothy's social worker, and they want to know if you're, if you're open to adopting Timothy. So Timothy's 10 years old now. And so I'm like, get off the phone, and I turn to Cindy, you know, and I tell her, and she's like, I told you I had that dream. Now look, some of you are like, does Cindy dream like this all the time? No, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, what dream, you know? Um, <laughs> And so all the way up Mount St. Helens and back, okay, we're just looking at each other like, what does this mean, you know? And, and so a couple days later, we're still out in the Seattle area, and uh, I'm kind of up before everybody, and I'm, I'm just getting ready to spend some time uh, in my devotions and reading God's Word, and, and uh, I'm kind of having this conversation with God. You ever had a conversation with God, right? I, I'm like, all right, God... <clears throat> That's great uh, that you gave Cindy a dream. I need something. You know, I signed up for the three-year-old, not the 10-year-old, okay? And uh, I opened my Bible. I'm in a one-year Bible reading plan. I hit Psalm 82, verses 3 and 4, and it says, Give justice to the poor and the orphan. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. Rescue the poor and helpless. Deliver them from the grasp of evil people. <laughs> okay, hit me like a ton of bricks, and I, you know, it was still that moment of, is this for real? Is this really happening? And so we begin to talk to, you know, people that we, we love and respect, and, and um, you know, holding on to this, you know, pretty clear a dream, and, and then, you know, after that, uh, God's Word just you know, blowing that up. And, and so we had people around us that, you know, are just really cautionary and, you know, well, you know, just be careful, you know. I was thinking of Tim Hawkins right now, if you guys know who that is. Be careful. Careful. Anyhow, be, be careful. And what is this going to do to Drew and, and all those types of things? You know, lots of people in our family couldn't understand. Um, is this for real? Is this the right way? But we knew. We knew. That, this is what God was doing. This wasn't something that, that Andy and Cindy, you know, were doing. This was something that God was, was leading. And so not everybody is going to understand. Now look, it's been five years. Who blinked, right? It's been five years already. He's out there right now having a good old time uh, with my folks. Comes back Thursday uh, from them. But here, here God was putting that together. And so, so when the Lord gives you something, okay, and it's not going to make sense, first of all, it probably won't make sense to you at first. And then maybe those around you, you know, they're going to they're gonna help you walk through that. And it's not going to uh, seem at times like, like everyone understands. That's okay. Just continue to pray. Continue to believe. Continue to ask the Lord to confirm His will in your life. As you're studying God's word, and so look, look, if, some, if these things happen to you and you're not in God's, God's word, you're so wrong. You're so off base. God's word confirms his will every time. Listen to me, every time. If you're like, oh, I'm just going to look at the stars and figure this out, or I'm going to pull out the paper and see my horoscope, you're playing with the demonic with that. Don't mess with that stuff. Turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. You see time and time again where the Israelites turned to other things other than God. It always got them into trouble. 
So ask the Lord to confirm these things through his word. And then obedience brings blessing. When we do all that God requires, we do the things that are already laid out in his word. He blesses our lives. It's a powerful, powerful thing that he does. And so uh, Matthew 3, 16 and 17 says, after his baptism, here's Jesus just doing what his father requires. We, we don't fully understand the, the fully God, fully man thing that, that still just kind of huh, hurts, our, hurts our mind. We need ibuprofen after that, thinking about it. So after his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Next steps with God. The Lord is for you. He loves it when you take next steps. He loves it that you fought through the spiritual battle to get here today. He loves it. He loves it when you pray with your family. He loves it when you're in his word. He loves it. He, it does, look, he loves you, period. But he's standing there cheering you on every day. Jesus intercedes before the Father, Scripture says. He is so for you. He loves you more than anyone. It's a powerful thing for us to have a a picture in our mind of what happened here. So a sign that you're on the right path. People don't always agree, but God's Word confirms. And as you continue to step out in obedience, that's when the miracles begin to happen. That's when the things begin to happen to continue to confirm his will, but his word will always confirm, will always confirm it. An additional thing that happens to us, uh, or signs here rather, uh, that we can kind of see when we're on the right path is comfort is sporadic and temptation is, is regular. Thank you, Pastor Andy, for the pick me up. Appreciate it. Comfort is sporadic, and temptation is regular in your life. Ah, it's it's the truth. And so we read, we read about Jesus. Here's this amazing moment. This is my beloved son. He's just been baptized. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Then the Spirit leads him into the wilderness to be tempted. See, now look. Now, some of us here, we'd be okay if it was like, then the devil led him. No, wait a minute. The the Spirit, the Spirit led Jesus. Does that mess with you? The, The Spirit, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted to a dry place, a place that he would, be, he would be hungry for 40 days. How many can go a day without food? I'm just saying. I mean, some of us, you know, we can do a week or whatever, right? And we're like all patting ourselves on the back. Woo. 40 days without Chipotle. <laughs> there should be a law. Forty days, the Spirit led him to be tempted. And see, sometimes we wonder when we're choosing the right things to follow the Lord, why things are so difficult. Why is it difficult? Why is it so hard? And when then we look at Jesus, and here he was doing the right thing, and at that moment, he's led into the wilderness to a dry place where he was hungry, where he had to learn Total dependence upon his father. See, this was at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He had three years of great responsibility, and here he was leading to the cross, leading to where he would pay the ultimate price. See, woohoo, baptism, woohoo, bottom rung, woohoo. You're my beloved son. Woo! The cross is coming. And I need to lead you to the wilderness so that you know and you're reminded that this is all about me. 
This is all about me, your Father, getting all the glory. Wow. See, Jesus didn't go to the cross to teach us how to live. He went to the cross to teach us how to die. To die to ourself so that we will continue to humble ourselves before Almighty God and say, God, you reign. I do not. God, it's all about your will in my life. It's all about your will, not about my will. See, comfort is sporadic. It's sporadic. We, we love the comfort. We love the hammock moments. Don't we? How many like a hammock? You like a good hammock? Right by the ocean? Right? You there with me? I'm so there. We like the hammock moments, but they are sporadic. They're there. They're there. But following the Lord and continuing to die to ourselves and continuing to lead our families and continuing to lead our church and continuing to lead our community takes people who will get on their knees and say, God, not me, but you. Not me, but you. God, I die to myself so that you will get all the glory. It's not about me. It's not about my family. It's not about any possession I have. God, it's all about you. Led by the Spirit. Hmm. Places of comfort are great, but it is the wilderness that helps us grow the most. Oh, I hate that. Don't you hate that? <laughs> Keep it real. We grow the most in the wilderness. And testing, that kind of testing is really for our benefit and makes our faith grow stronger. It's James 1, 2 through 4, says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Everyone say it with me together. Perseverance. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for perseverance. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you will be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And we got Jesus leading the way for us, showing us what that really, what that really means. And so if you're experiencing some spiritual, spiritual warfare, you know, we, we sang you know, that song, Love is War, and, and it's about this fight. There's a fight that's going on. There's spiritual warfare that happens. You know, when you're confronting the enemy, the enemy thinks he's in charge. You know, Scripture talks about him being the ruler of this world. And so there, there is this battle because you're bringing light into your family. You're bringing light into your workplace, your school, Right? You're bringing light into your community. You're bringing light into the neighbor that drives you absolutely nuts. I know nobody has any neighbors like that here. And so spiritual warfare is normal. Do you recognize them? Do you recognize the battles? What tempts you most? When do you find that you're being the most tempted in your life? Remember Halt? Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, right? The spiritual battle that goes on, if you are experiencing spiritual warfare, you're experiencing temptation, you're experiencing testing, then you're probably on the right path. Anyone feel good? You're probably on the right path. If you're experiencing these things, because it's a testing period and the Lord is preparing you, he's preparing you for the future, he's preparing you for your family. See, some of you don't have kids yet. The Lord is preparing you for your kids, to lead your kids, so that your relationship with the Lord is where it needs to be, so they see a genuine follower of Jesus Christ. So that your kids see that. 
The devil wants to short-circuit God's plans by tempting, tempting you to fall into his traps. His plans are traps. He wants to short-circuit that. And they're all tied around pleasure. So in 1 John uh, 2, 16 through 17, it says, For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. And so these temptations and things that you experience, they come in many forms. Some just to doubt God, right? To doubt God, to doubt his word. God's word doesn't apply today. Or they're distractions from God's plans, whether it's pursuits of money, the things we just read about, the pursuits of, of money and possessions and, and power, distractions from from God's kingdom and his ways and what he really wants us focused on. And then there's the disruptions. He tries to disrupt God's plan by getting you to fall into moral failure and unfaithfulness. He loves it when that happens. And how many pastors do we, do we see fall? He loves that. He loves to disrupt if he can drop a bomb and get as many people to turn away. Uh, from the Lord. All these temptations. But here's the deal. God is faithful. Aren't you glad about that? He's faithful through all the testing and through all the temptations that you experience. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Isn't that a great promise? That even though the temptations come, how many, how many are dealing with temptation? Everyone's hand should be raised. <laughs> I am so over that. I don't get tempted anymore. <laughs> you lie. Yeah. Well, add that one to your list. Anyhow, seriously, we're all tempted. We all go through times of temptation. It is part of this journey. And when we continue to surrender to the Lord, when we continue to say, God, help me, we have his word that tells us we're not going to be tempted beyond what we can bear as we continue to stay surrendered. And then you look at how Jesus, how Jesus battled with the devil. I mean, this is like, you know, up close and personal with Satan, right? I'm so grateful that I don't have to deal with that, right? We don't have to deal directly with Satan. And here's Jesus you know, meeting up with Satan and having this confrontation uh, going on. And uh, Jesus shows us how to battle the enemy. Jesus answered every temptation from Satan with what? The Word of God. Why is it so hard to memorize Scripture? Could it be Satan? Could it be Satan? Could it be the enemy? He doesn't want you to memorize scripture so that you have power to defeat the enemy. It's amazing. See, Jesus answered with God's word. If you look at those things, you can write these down and look at them later, but it was Deuteronomy 6, 13. Um, and then verse 16 as well. So Deuteronomy 6, verse 13, and then Deuteronomy 6, verse 16. And then Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. These were the verses that Jesus used against uh, the enemy. And then what you see there also as well is that Satan used God's word too. Did you see that? Did you read that in there? He, he used God's word. He was quoting Psalm 91, taking it completely out of context. But Jesus is like, uh-uh, I know how that goes. How about you shouldn't test the Lord your God? which shows us the importance to know the context of that scripture. To know the context so that we're not fooling ourselves. We're not fooling ourselves by taking a scripture completely out of context and uh, using it. You know, give, scripture says to give honor to whom honor is due. So I'm just giving honor to myself. 
Uh, I think you might have missed, you might have missed something there. Uh, our scripture says, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. So I'm not letting my left hand know what my right hand is doing. No, that doesn't work either. Anyhow, we can kind of twist things at times. Listen, the Lord is for you. 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the Lord is with you. And it comes every day, surrendering our life to the Lord, just saying, God, I need you today. Um, this, it's not just a moment on Sundays where, where we're asking, you know, who's ready to follow Christ? Listen, all of us together, who's ready to follow Christ? You know, I, it's all of us together saying, I am going to follow the Lord. I'm going to follow the Lord. And God helps us to do that. We're going to close with this. feels good to do the right thing. But I'm not worried about pleasing you today, and you shouldn't be worried about pleasing me. There's an audience of one that we need to please. There's an audience of one that we live for, and that's God. God, I, I'm not worried about pleasing anybody else, but I'm worried <laughs> I want to follow you. And all of us know what it's like to do the right thing and to have somebody come alongside us and go, oh, nailed it. And we are so proud of you. Have you had that moment? Have you had somebody in your life just, listen, that was, that was awesome. That was so big. What, what, what happened there was, was so cool. I had one of those moments yesterday with Cassidy once I remembered that she was getting baptized, which is a whole other story. Epic fail, Dad. Baptized everybody, and then Cindy's like, hey, uh, did you forget somebody? And here's Cassidy over there like, hey, I'm ready. But it wasn't like, it wasn't like I'm ready, like, you know, let's get this over with. It was like, I'm ready because I'm ready. You know, and, and, and it was a big moment. And I can look at that, and I'm just like, God, that is so cool. God, that is so awesome. That, that's something that you have done. And so I'm telling Cassidy, look, I'm so proud of you. That was so big, big of you. Have you had moments like that? Well, look, God is so proud of you. God loves you. You're like, Pastor Andy, I have so much junk going on in my life. If you had any clue what things are really like, I came here on fumes. Good. Because I know, I know that God has your full attention right now. But he is for you. He's looking at you, saying, I love you no matter what. You know, unconditional love, it's really hard for us to get because we even find at times that we struggle with unconditional love. We find that we struggle. But here God loves you no matter what. Even while we were sinners, Christ died for us. That is powerful. He loves you with an undying love, and he's saying, look, here's my dearly beloved son. Here's my dearly beloved daughter with whom I am well pleased. He loves you. He is for you. And he longs for every plan and purpose to be fulfilled in your life. You might be like, nobody around me even believes that. God does. He does. And he's for you. And he's saying, come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's put aside the weights, put aside the sin that's holding us back, and let's run with endurance the race that's marked out for us. Amen? Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God that you continue to draw us into you. Draw us more into your presence. Draw us onto your path, God. When, when we get distracted from you, when we get distracted from your ways, God, oh, you're right there, Lord, forgiving us, helping us get back up. And so, Lord, I just pray right now for every person, God, that feels like, hey, I, I have blown it here. I've blown it here. God, would you just bring encouragement 
right now. Let me do this. Just with heads bowed and eyes closed this morning, look, you're coming before God and you say, look, I, I need God right now. I need him in my life right now. Would you just raise your hand where you're at? Who else? Come on. I need God right now. This is where it all starts. All starts with the Lord. You're saying in your heart right now, God, I need you. Lord, I pray that you would supernaturally touch each person, Lord, as they're honest before you. Just tell the Lord, God, be my leader. I'm messing things up. The sin in my life is messing things up. God, I surrender it to you. Forgive me of my sin. Help me to follow you. And the Lord's going to help you do it. We love you, God. We thank you for what you're going to accomplish, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would help us recognize the power that we have in you. You're an awesome God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just a moment, we're going to receive our offering today. And uh, so many great things that the Lord is doing. I hear the worship band behind me, and I'm like, oh, I want to sing this song. Here we have our debut in a couple weeks here where the worship band is going to be leading out in the community. It's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be a little different. I'm going to be going in there uh, to really a secular audience, and God is going to use that in a powerful way. There's going to be some great things that happen in people's lives by us engaging our community in this way. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about what God is going to do. And I'm asking you as the church, would you pray? Pray for our our worship team. Pray for our staff as we prepare. Um, For those of you that haven't signed up yet uh, to be part of that, uh, we have some people that are out on vacation. And so you're like, oh, they've always got it covered. (laughs) Not this time. So uh, we need your help. Uh, with that. We need some people to grill. We need some people uh, to be there to uh, pass out the food uh, as well. And it's going to be a great time uh, together. Ushers, would you please come and receive our offering today? I gave you some next steps there. Uh, Memorizing scripture, Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Reflecting and evaluating where is Satan trying to distract and disrupt God's plan for your life. And then action, begin choosing verses to memorize weekly to resist the tempter that we know as Satan. And then our way to sign up. And you can also sign up on the app as well uh, together. So God is good. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in our church, God. Lord, I pray that you continue to do a deep work in us. God, don't allow the enemy to steal our joy. Don't allow the enemy to gain any ground in our life, Lord. We surrender to you. We want to follow you with all that we are. And God, would you help us to do that? We're believing for great things in each person's life. Lord, in their family, God, in our church, in this community, God, we know that the future is just amazing. And so God, we thank you for what you're going to do in and through us as we continue to surrender to you. Raise us up. Raise us up in our community. Unite us, Lord, with other churches, Lord, God, that we would be able to walk in unity and reach Lorton and the South County community together for you. We love you. We thank you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, God bless you. Have an awesome week as you follow the Lord. And uh, it's going to get gooder and gooder. It will. Amen. And I know your love is what it all. It took the fall to embrace my sorrows. I know you took the fight. You came and died. But the
Follow in the light of your 